Live from the Rant Radio Network, you're listening to Real Estate Rant with your host, Alex Alanis, and your co-host, Mr. Alonso Rodriguez. No problems, just solutions for real estate needs, hot topics, and controversial chat. And we are back here We're at back. the Real Estate Rant, the towers of the Rant Radio Network. I'm your host, Mr. Alex Alanis, and uh, to my left here, Mr. Alonso Rodriguez, uh, my broker. How are you, sir? Good, good, good. Uh, nice to nice to be here on this. Uh, it's uh, today. I want to call it a a one a winter wonderland. There you go. Uh, uh, Merry Merry Christmas our, to everybody. Uh, we're, we're, Christmas we are show, feeling so. festive today. <laughs> In studio today, we have Mr. Uh, Phil Longoria. Uh, How are you doing? Good, good. How are things? Uh, uh, Mr. Phil is uh, joining us today. Uh, I, you know, I did want to say one thing. Um, there's uh, uh, a lot of you know all of the uh, the I don't know mentors and people that teach uh, seminars and all that good stuff. They always tell you to follow your dreams, right? And uh, and one of my dreams um, early on was was to get into real estate, be you know a high dollar real estate investor, what have you. It hasn't happened yet, but uh, I always like to do those that kind of stuff. It, it's it, a little different from the glamour that's that's that that it, it's all uh, hyped up to be, right? Well, exactly, you know, exactly. So um, one of the things that uh, that uh, I wanted to uh, actually thank Phil for was Phil was able to help us realize uh, some of our dreams and just by doing the show, by allowing us to do the show. And so, uh, Phil, I just wanted to thank you for that. Um, uh, even though we, even though we we brought you on today because you're interested in uh, in getting into the real estate field, but uh, uh, again, I just wanted to thank you for helping us realize our dreams by allowing us to do this show and. Uh, talk about the things that we feel uh, strongly about and passionate about that are important in real estate, right? Well, I mean, it, I mean, they, I feel they're important. The things that we talk about, you know, uh, we we talk about ensuring the public trust. We talk about um, uh, having ha- trying not to focus on the problems and instead focus Find on the solutions. solutions, right? So, so this is the reason why uh, uh, I wanted to have a show, and and Phil came to me and said, Alex, you know what? One of the most powerful uh, uh, weapons that you'll ever have is a microphone, and I thought that was good advice. You know, so so, so uh, why don't you tell us your story, Alex, about 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 when you were having a uh, when you were having a dinner and someone all of a sudden recognized you and said, "Wow, you're from the Rant Radio Network, <laughs> Joe, right?" Well, it was actually it was actually lunch, and and uh, we were at the Peking and Downey. And uh, That's there was a terribly car- sexy. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. and you know we're sitting there having lunch. I was I was there with some clients, and they came up and and uh, they actually bought us lunch. Wow, and that's isn't it, that's powerful microphone. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's a work behind the microphone. You know, too, too bad I can't get dinner out of that. Right, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen. But anyway, uh, we are doing a Christmas show today, and uh, if you can give us a call eight five five six nine three four eight nine seven. That's eight five five six nine three four eight nine seven. Or uh, you can uh, email us at real estate rant. Radio at gmail.com. I almost forgot about what that was. Um, kind of a long uh, uh, beginning to an email. But nevertheless, uh, uh, if you give us an email, uh, a lot of people actually send us questions. And uh, and we try to answer them on the show uh, if we feel they're, they are uh, pertinent to answer on the show. Uh, you can email us at realestaterantradio at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, uh, I do believe that uh, we have a question. Absolutely, there's. What do we got, Mr. Alonso? There's several questions that came out uh, this week, but we'll answer, we'll answer just a few, Alex. And the first one is uh, is uh, is out of Jessica from Oceanside, and it says, uh, "We bought a home in October. We have issues with the septic tank, and the owners were aware but never disclosed. Do we have a case?" Well, I mean, the way that she puts it, I w- I would say absolutely they have a case. But um, the problem is this, is that in every contract, there's the as-is clause. Um, For, first of all, Alex, let's give out our little disclosure. As, as licensed brokers, we are prohibited from, from uh, answering uh, technical questions, but le- these are le- just our, our, our humble opinions. <laughs> <laughs> legal questions. There. We, we actually uh, refrain from, from answering legal questions, but we can, we can comment and, and give our opinions on technical questions. Um, in terms of the contract... The contracts, most of the contracts in California state, that you're they're buying the property in as is condition with the right of inspection. Now, well, uh, th- that's one of the that's one of the things that uh, you need to disclose if you're aware. And this in this in this case, she tells us that they were aware and they did not disclose. 
So in, in that... Well, how do they know they were aware? Did they're saying that the seller knew about it, but well, didn't that's say what the question reads. It says it says uh, they bought a home in October. They have issues with the septic tanks, and the owners were aware, but never disclosed. Yeah. So it's. I mean, okay. So so we're just gonna assume that the owners were aware. Oh, and, and a little bit about that. It was. Uh, it goes back into. It says. It says that the the their sept that when they when they were uh, when the home inspectors were out there to do the inspection. They actually the the septic people told them that you know the previous owner they had already addressed the issue, but the but but oh they got the same person yeah but but the that the, they didn't want to do the work on it so that's what the that's what was left out on the question was that it was already uh, uh, told by the septic people that. There was some issues, but they they refused to repair it. So it was the same company that went yes, out there. So, the so they company. got they got caught red handed. Yeah, and, and so in this case, you know, I I think the the company would have to swear on oath that you know would have to go <laughs> and testify, you know, to prove the fact that. Well, report on it. Well, I'll prove the fact that they were told that, and then, uh, you know, and then they have a case. I think you know. Well, well, let's let's talk about let's go back a little bit as to what the buyer's rights are. The buyer, this is actually twofold. The buyer has the right to inspect all of these things and then address them in what we call a request for repairs, okay? The other part of it is is that the agent involved um, should have, and this is why I always advise using uh, what's called, uh, it's buyer's inspection election. That That's the form. And it's got, it's got probably, I don't know, 25, 30 different sections where you can mark whether or not the the they picked certain things to inspect so they'll say they'll mark it says just all it says yes or no on the on the form so you just mark yes yes no 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 all the way down but but at least it shows that they elected not to get those cut those types of inspections and and that goes to prove that uh that uh you know inspections are important you know don't cut corners to get all the inspections that need to be done absolutely you know avoid ha hassles and headaches at the end of your transaction so like, that's, like this, exactly, and that's what this is one instance where you know they probably thought they can save a couple bucks, uh, a couple bucks uh, not doing the inspection, but now they're gonna have to outweigh the fact: is it worth hiring an attorney? Because the attorney is gonna cost. Is it? Do you hire the attorney, or do you fix a problem yourself? So well, well, that that brings me to the, to the next portion of what I was gonna mention. When you're talking about a septic tank, what are, what exactly are the costs that are involved in fixing this problem? Most of the time, the times that I've experienced septic tanks, we're talking about two, three hundred dollars. So uh, it becomes a small claims, and small claims are actually exempt from arbitration and mediation. You, these people can go into small claims, uh, uh, you know, file against the seller if they feel strongly about it, right? But I'll be honest with you, most people will forget about it. Say, so, you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just get it fixed. It's three hundred bucks. Water under the bridge. You know that's typically what happens. It's gonna, it's probably gonna run them uh, more to go to court, and you know they're gonna lose a day of pay and exactly. And it's it just brings a lot of uh, strenuous activity well, it's, uh, it's, that you do not yeah really want don't want to hassle doing. Yeah, and and you know I'll be honest with you uh, too is that you know wh where's this property Oxnard they said Oxnard. Well, they're from they they were from o Oceanside. I mean, they were from oh, San o Diego. Oceanside, okay, yeah. O Oceanside, but I mean, I believe the property was the second property they had bought up in the desert, Palm Desert area. Oh, okay, okay. Well, Oceanside, um, the the while well, the property probably was uh, fairly expensive, you know, Oceanside could be um, kind of pricey. So, you know, I guess this question was to well, the, I mean, the amount of I'm damage. I'm not sure. It's Oceanside. Uh, the uh, Oceanside is a, a lot of the. A property there are, are it's, city city connected. It's so I believe yeah. it, it must have been a a second home they were buying, and it's a military town too. Ocean yeah. City. So so anyway, in, interesting question. Um, but that's my take on it. I mean, those the two things is the the inspection election or buyer's inspection election. It's a form that they fill out, and then the other part is is that what kind of damage are we talking about? If they had this other company out there, the the septic company. You know, they gave them an estimate. There was no, there was no mention as to how much it was, it was to fix. So, just one Im important uh, fact. Just remember next time. You know, do all your inspections, and you know, don't let anyone talk you out of it. And and is it possible that maybe Santa Claus, because today is Christmas, uh, could take care of that for him? 
Well, I'm just, uh, I'm what sure Santa Claus, Santa, Santa Claus is probably not going to be able to take a dump there when he gets yeah. there. <laughs> We're going to put an out of order. Too many cookies and milk. Huh? <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? What the yeah, hell is exactly. wrong with you? Give us a call, 855-693-4897. Uh, thanks for joining us here on Christmas Day. Do uh, we have time for another question, Alex? We, we probably do. we got a few minutes, sure. Okay, well, let's do another question. And this one, is, uh, this one comes from Jason out of Rancho Cucamonga. And it says, uh, does a renter or the lander pay water bill on a rent at home? Well, that, that's, a, that's a very simple question. And, and it, I guess it just requires a simple answer. It, it's up to negotiation. It is up to negotiation. It's, some people have the idea that uh, usually when it's a it's a single family resident, then yes, the renter does pay the pay the utility, the water on it. On the other hand, if they're apartment units and it's only one one water bill, then the tenant usually uh, usually the landlord will cover the bill because just of the fact of dividing up the money, you really can't tell who's wasting more water than the the other individuals. Uh, so, a bit, like you said, in Southern California, everything's contractual. So, make sure you read your leases, and and uh, it should be stated, you know, clearly in there. And uh, if you don't have a lease, you know, make sure you get a lease uh, signed, so you know what you're getting into. And if you don't, there's always housing authority, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> don't bring them into this. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, it's 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 all everything's negotiable in real estate. So you just gotta make sure of when you get into a contract. Uh, what you're getting into. Yeah, I think that a lot of people think it's a paradigm that landlords pay for water bills and trash, and there's a reason for that, and it's because most landlords, and, and I've been to some of the landlord association meetings, they talk about uh, uh, it's a smart thing to do for a landlord to pay for the water and trash because they don't want the tenants, number one, not to water their lawn or and or their foliage, and then number two, to, to leave trash lying around on the property just because they don't want to pay for trash. So, so... That's why it's, I think it's become a paradigm that it's expected for the landlords to pay for those things. But it's not contractual. There's no written rule that says that they have to pay for water and trash. Uh, another thing is, you know, you, it's, it's, a, it's a good negotiation tool. Whenever you're, uh, we'll be right back. We're coming up on a break. Thanks for getting cut off. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be right back with some more real estate rant. Are you watching the game at home? Why? Come watch it at Mambo Grill, the hottest spot in Downey. You'll have good food, drinks, and a great time at a low price. We have the coldest beer in our sports bar, where you can enjoy the game on any of our huge flat screen TVs. And when your home team wins, you get 25% off anything in Mambo Grill. We're on Downey Avenue, one block north of Firestone, or visit us on the web. Mambo Grill, love at first bite. Have your attention when it comes to tequila two things matter heart and passion never compromising integrity for mass production number one tequila delivers the goods taste the heart and passion of mexico in every bottle we make it right we make it fun superior tequila there's only number one there's only number one there's only number one Been in an accident? Then you need your vehicle professionally repaired. That's exactly what you get when you bring your vehicle to Greg's Auto Body Repair. Free quotes within minutes. We will provide everything you need for a hassle-free auto body repair, from an accurate estimate to working with your insurance company. We will get your vehicle to its pre-accident condition as soon as possible. Greg's Auto Body has been serving Los Angeles County and local cities since 1970. Call us at 562-789-1300. A home is the biggest investment in most people's lives. Buying or selling should be a positive experience. Whether you want to be a wealthy real estate investor or just trying to find a place to call home, at AGR and Associates, we focus on the client's needs. We understand the market better than most. Let us bring the value to you and make the right choice. AGR and Associates, making your dream house a reality. Call us today for a free consultation at 562 882 or you can log on to www.herrealtors.com. With the track record of great results, bringing knowledge, wisdom, and expertise to you. Hablamos Español.
Live from the Rant Radio Network, you're listening to Real Estate Rant with your host, Alex Alanis, and your co-host, Mr. Alonso Rodriguez. No problems, just solutions for real estate needs, hot topics, and controversial chat. And we are back here at the Real Estate Rant, here at the Towers of the Rant Radio Network. I'm your host, Mr. Alex Alanis, and to my left here, Mr. Alonso Rodriguez. You're not so talented co-host. Yeah, yeah. What we like to say about the Real Estate <laughs> Rant here is that we have no talent, but we know a few things about real, real estate. estate. <laughs> and that we do. Uh, Alex. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, in studio today, Mr. Phil Longoria, uh, uh, good friend and uh, also host of the Three Guys Rant. Uh, I believe uh, you guys are on... on uh, Mondays and Thursdays, is that correct? Mondays and well, actually Mondays and Wednesdays now. Oh, okay, you guys changed Wednesdays. it. We moved it. Uh, we do KCA and NBC News Radio, ten fifty AM, in the IE, the OC, and uh, everything. You know, they won't let us into LA. So, Mr. Phil, celebrity in house. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> 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 well, we 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 listen to the show, Phil, and, and I'll be honest with you, you guys. Uh, uh, are funny. You guys are informative. You guys talk about you know, especially when they're picking on Arvin, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, and you know, and why don't you go tell your mom to shut up? <laughs> Ar- Arvin's the comic relief. You know, he just happens to be uh, the scapegoat. You know, the, the, he happens to be the the dartboard for the darts. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> and I have to thank Mr. Pantalones for uh, for doing uh, our engineer work uh, today, Mr. Phil. Um, Santa Claus has brought you something here uh, here on our Christmas show. Santa Claus has brought you uh, the thought that you want to become a real estate agent. You know, no! yeah. I, I, again, in, in my opinion, I, I look at you guys, I'm like, it's got to be easy money. <laughs> oh, man, come on. <laughs> so, uh, I feel like I'm assuming that Alex showed you a couple of his checks. Huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. I mean, it looks like easy money. <laughs> How are you going to be? Oh, uh, you okay. Well, well, we want to talk about my checks, okay? <laughs> But uh, uh, now, when you say when you say easy money, you know it's funny that you say that because when I started off in real estate, I think that that most of the the people that I came across um, as through my travels, whether it be at an appraisal or at, at a transaction that I was working on, most of these individuals uh, really did have very little discipline, very little schooling. And they really thought that they could make it big in real estate. And, and you know, it's it's funny you say that, Alex, because when I got into the business, there was a big saying, which even came from my college professor who told us, you know, fake it till you make it, you know, <laughs> which was what I heard. And I said, well, what do you mean fake it well, till you exactly. make it? Well, exactly. And that's what they meant, you know, uh, show the people you're successful. So I guess a lot of people took it to the extreme back in the in the early '90s when I started was you know the fancy cars, the nice suits, the expensive uh, trophy wives, and everything. You know that was uh, how can I say the the persona you wanted to you wanted to uh, present. Yeah, it was a facade. The fa- yeah, exactly yeah. the facade, and 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 it's not all glamour and glitz. You know, it's not like they said everything that shines is in gold, and that's what like real estate something like. Well, and I guess you know when I had approached you know Alex, I was like, "How hard can it possibly be? You guys list a house, you show a house, you sell a house, it's done." It's not hard at all. It's not hard at all, Phil. The the reality, it's not hard. You know, you know, you know who and makes it hard. You know, who makes it hard is the agents. It's it's they make it harder than it we is. complicate things more than we we want it. We I mean, we can make it run smoothly. The bottom line to me, I mean, you as long as you have a good escrow officer, your transaction is gonna run smooth because <laughs> they're the ones really doing all the work, you know. That I the, mean, t- the TC, fully- the title company, the appraiser, well, the lender, you know, all of these people in the background, and this is why we bring those people on the show. And like Alex said, sometimes the the real estate agent is overrated. You know, we get too much credit for 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 stuff that you know we have behind the scenes. You know, we've got a lot of people that help us, give us support. You know. And uh, make our transaction a lot, hundred percent easier than what it actually is pictured to be, on the on the regular uh, layman's eyes. You know, <laughs> uh, we come out like the ones with Superman ripping off our shirts, <laughs> and we have the big ass. You know, well, that's all the, the signs that you see. You but, know, but, but, you're driving the, down the street, you see these <laughs> signs everywhere. But the know? reality, it's a, we got a, a whole network of support from your from your board of realtors to you know to your title reps to your escrow officers and. And it's it's actually a a, a good uh, how can I say it a uh, a good foundation. I I think what the what the best thing you can have is a good foundation. The connections with all those people that give you the support will make your job a lot easier. Yeah, getting and, into it. 
And and finding all these people is easy because they come to you. When, when exactly. You, once you, once you get your license, you know. Yeah, and, and a lot of people think like you know, a lot of people don't know that it's easier to become a real estate stage, real estate agent than they actually think it is. You know, you can call any brokerage office and tell them, "Oh, I'm thinking of becoming a, a real estate agent." And I'm sure their 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 office manager will tell you they have <laughs> some sort of uh, real estate. <laughs> you know, they they have some sort of training that will help you guide you. They'll 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 figure out. They'll help you pay for classes. They'll help you do everything if they really want. If they really see you're gonna be a productive agent. So so Phil, I mean, how did you get this this uh, this this funny idea about becoming a real estate agent? Well, you know, again, it, it looks like Dumbass. fast money, easy money. Okay, so so that that's just the bottom line. It's just a money issue. It's a it's a money issue. I mean, well, I, I it's somewhere down the line. I have visions of grandeur, and perhaps becoming a real estate developer. Okay, you know, right. I did contracting and, and a lot of construction when I was younger. And you know, as they again, you know, at least the the idiots that report the news, unlike us, who you know say the economy is getting better. I figure, hey, you know, somewhere down the line, maybe I should look at it because you know I missed the last. Yeah, you know, I I didn't go completely broke during the the two thousand eight one. So maybe you know, on the next bubble, I'll try to you know catch a ride on that one. No, and it makes sense, Phil, because uh, like you say, if you want to get into developing and and uh, buying and fixing up your own properties, and you have that knowledge, then why not? Hey, now I'm not gonna pay commission because now guess what? I'm listing my own property. That's another. That's another advantage of it. You know the it, way it I is. look at it. It is. But 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 Phil, now so I just wanted to comment real quick about what you said. Um, so you're as delusional as most people coming into the real estate. Co- real estate <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know? Excellent. Well, I, you know, and it's funny because I, I look around the neighborhoods as we drive into the studio or whatever. You know, I see houses go up for sale. Three days later, they're sold or there's an, an escrow sign, people moving in, moving out. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, it looks like it's back on the fast track again. So, and I figured out oh, what the hell, let's make some money. Right on. So so becoming a sexful, uh, successful real estate agent versus becoming uh now just getting your license because uh, alonso had mentioned about just becoming an agent is one thing but now trying to be successful in the business that's a totally different thing okay and 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 uh it really it really boils down to time and it boils down to the 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 maybe where you happen to be at the moment because like i mentioned most of the industry is going to come to you once you get your real estate license you're going to be marketed by termite people uh title people um, you're gonna be marketed by, uh, by uh, a couple uh, of good recruiters. Well, uh, recruiters are gonna come. Ain't nobody got time for that. I yeah. mean, you're gonna have a. As soon as you take your 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 uh, real estate courses, you're gonna have a lot of of uh, mail uh, mail to you. You know, wanting you to join their firm. You know, because how does broker how do brokers make their money by having successful real estate agents that sell in their firm, and that's you know for 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 someone like me that's a broker, it's that. I want to take everybody to anybody I can get that's going to put a, a, a dollar in my pocket. Hey, you know what? I'm going to show you a few tricks of the trade in order for you to make me money. Oh, yes, I am. You better believe that I'm going to. So, so let's, uh, let, let's uh, <laughs> I got a question, though. When you say in your first, does that mean you actually got to go to an office? Well, you, it, it's it's, yeah, uh, it's you, you have to you have to hang your license with a broker. OK, it's, yeah. it's, it's it's one thing becoming a real estate agent. You, you become a real estate agent so you can sell property under a broker. So now you now with your license now you come to a broker and a broker is it's the license is your negotiation tip with your broker because there's plenty of brokers out there that want want you to sell in their firm so now is is where you use it to negotiate commissions you know and like I said right now uh, the way brokers are paying we we don't get a a, a big cut from their commissions because why is uh we look at it more as a as a how can I say it the more agents I have the more money I can make and. How are you going to come aboard on me by by giving you a a good percentage on your commission split? But but let's go back to what you were talking about uh, a second ago. So you were talking about recruiting agents. Uh, how do you do that, Alonso? How do you recruit agents? <laughs> <laughs> give us give us an exa- a few well, examples of what you did in the it's, past. It's, <laughs> it's uh, recruiting agents is is basically you try to give them the the support they need. You want to uh, be able to help them. Okay, and that's everything. the textbook answer. I want the real answer. What? What? what, uh, what the real answer. Come on, is, let's, is, give us is, some. Uh, give us some stuff that you used to well, do. Well, b- b- back in the days, it was taking them. You know, like a trip to Vegas. You know, you you kind of like you know show them a little bit of the glamour life, and you know that that's what the the 
It was in the past. Nice, nice dinners. Uh, yeah, maybe but, but, but that, that doesn't money happen for the now. That, that doesn't happen now, Alex. I, <laughs> I know where you're going, Alex. That doesn't happen now. <laughs> now, as you know, what you're on a good dance split, and, and keep, let's keep it that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so there, there's a difference in the environment. I mean, you're talking about in the 90s that used to go on. I remember, um, wow, I used to go to Vegas every month, literally, as an appraiser. I wasn't even an agent. Wow. Yeah. They, Ain't I, nobody got time for that. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and they, yeah, because these people. They were all about. It was all about the glamour. It was all about the. It was about the money, and that's because things were plentiful. But th- something has changed in real estate, and I think it, it's the volume of transactions and, has, has really. Shortened and not up. only that, now it becomes a little bit harder with the, you know, with the. How can I say with the selected few that we have that can actually really afford to buy a home. Back then, is they used to say, is pretty much all you needed to do is have a heartbeat and a breath, a breath, a good credit score, and you were able to get finance for a home. That's not and, the situation and, and able, now, as and we able, all know. Able to sign, right? Able yeah. To sign, so. Well, you know, and sometimes <laughs> not even that. You know, sometimes it was just a a, a verbal cue or, or a head a head shake or something. <laughs> How much money would you like, Mister White? <laughs> you show up at the bank and they they bring, they come out with briefcases of money. You know, how much do you need? Hey, and you don't even have to pay it back. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. Give us a call, 855-693-4897. Uh, in studio, we have Mr. Phil Longoria. Interested in joining our ludicrous real estate industry. Uh, we're giving him uh, uh, a few tips on uh, uh, how to join the industry and what, what you have to look forward to. Phil, so, so I, I hope it, we, we don't discourage you. No, not at all. But, I mean, so, so I, I, my understanding was I just have to take a test, correct? That's that's correct. Uh, you need to take a test, but I, you also I, need I to get I have one right a, here. <laughs> but you, but not only that, but you got to take uh, three college courses, which you can get online uh, to certify you that you've done the, the hours of the training of principals practice and another elective, which are uh, usually 16 hour college courses of of uh, online. I, I want to say an online uh, test you got to do and, and give you your certification or go through a accredited uh, community college. And that's what I usually recommend. Go to the community college because you're gonna actually learn the stuff, you know. Not, not. I mean, if you do the th- the thing online, you'll you'll get you'll get the certificates. But when you go and do the test, you're really gonna be blank, you know. Uh, really becoming a getting a license as a real estate agent, you really need to know a lot of vocabulary and terminology is is a key point that I think to, in getting your real estate it license. It is. It is. We, let's pay some bills. <laughs> Stay tuned, we'll be right back with some more Real Estate Rant. Add some crazy flavor to your vape pen. You're looking for something new and exciting in liquid vapor? Go to Crazy Cloud's eJuice. Find them at BurstOflavor.com and try any of the new 12 flavors they have available. Blueberry, mint, raspberry, chocolate, gummy bear, hemp, watermelon, cola, orange, pina colada, coconut, or red bully. Call us today at 855-WE-BURST. Or visit us at BurstoFlavor.com and order yours today. The Share Foundation is the health division of the Koi Chiropractic Institute, a 501c3, 509a2 public nonprofit organization dedicated to the growth and development of the natural health care services. In particular, through the chiropractic profession, offering health services at the Share Clinics in the greater Los Angeles area. Your donations can help in expanding these facilities across the nation. Research programs and public education thus offering a solution to the many of the health challenges we face. Your donations are tax deductible and can be sent through our website at www.sharefoundation.com. That's www.cherfoundation.com by clicking on the donation button. Thank you. The experts know that for pastry, Baker's Bodega has it all. Exclusive brands like Westco Bankmark, Satin Ice, and Pastry Pride. One-on-one day seminars for cake decorating and gelatin art. So for our service, wide range of ingredients and supplies, and for the low prices, Baker's Bodega has it all. But you don't need to be an expert. Baker's Bodega, 7869 Paramount Boulevard in Pico Rivera. Come, we're waiting for you. Hey, bro, this is a good game. You know what would make it better? What, bro? 
a michelada. A michelada? What's a michelada? A michelada is somewhere in the middle of a Mexican Bloody Mary and a Mexican margarita. Oh, I got you covered, bro. You got a cup in your pocket? No, sir. I got my pocket-sized michelada. Mucho macho michelada. pocket size? pocket size. So you can take it with you anywhere you go. Where'd you get that at? At the nearest convenience store. And you can also buy it at muchomachomichelada.com. You know what will make it better? After we get drunk, if they had a line, we can call. We can call their drunk man. You can leave a message and then log on to the site and listen to your stupidity afterwards. What's that number? It's 855-MICHE69. What's that number again? 855-MICHE69. Awesome. Mucho Macho Michelada. What's up, guys? Sports Guru and Bud Knocker from the Sportscast Wednesdays, 12 to 2 Pacific on Rant Radio Network. We got everything you need to know about sports. We got all the latest video highlights. We got you got. We got Bonehead of the Week. We're talking sports, drinking beer, and having a good time. If you missed the show, go to rantradionetwork.com and listen on demand. So check us out every Wednesday, 12 to 2 on Rant Radio Network. Live from the Radio Network, you're listening to Real Estate Rant with your host, Alex Alanis, and your co-host, Mr. Alonso Rodriguez. No problems, just solutions for real estate needs, hot topics, and controversial chat. And we are back, bottom of the hour, Real Estate Rant here at the Rant Radio Network, uh, in studio t- this morning, which uh, actually is there every day, uh, Mr. Phil Longoria, uh, trying to become a real estate agent. We discussed a little bit about... Uh, the combination of education and, and researching a broker. Uh, uh, we talked about what brokers do to kind of uh, uh, schmooze over some of their agents, if you will, to draw them in, right, Alonso? You want to draw? Well, you- it, it depends <laughs> how much uh, drama you want in your office and, and, and how much you're, uh, you're up to babysitting, you know, because sometimes it's. Uh, it's uh, more the headache than the productivity that goes on in the but, offices. But isn't, isn't, isn't that par for the course? I mean, I hear you guys make 10%, or we make, the agent would make 10% of the sale. Uh, that's actually not true. Right now, we're, we're, we're looking at a 6%, 5%, and then you're splitting it with the, with the listing broker and the selling agent. So yeah, it's yeah, and, then, uh, and then the broker takes their part. Yeah, and then the broker takes their part. Then, usually. then you have to pay E&O insurance. Typically, there's other costs involved. Do you have to pay a transaction coordinator? Okay, you're making this sound really bad. It's almost worse than having a job. So well, you're telling me that I went from 10% to, based on your numbers, I'm down to 1.5%? Um, I don't know that it's 1.5%. I mean, it's probably more like maybe 2.5% oh, well, of, of that, the sales. That, that, that sounds spectacular. Yeah, well, 2.5%. Well, it, it, it could be, you know, it could be fairly good money if you're, if you're, doing, if you're doing transactions. You know, if you're, if you're closing uh, one deal every six months, then, yeah, you're, you're, you're below minimum wage. But if you're doing maybe one a month, you know, easily making over a hundred grand a year. So it just depends on how many transactions you're closing. Um, but that kind of brings me a little bit to G- give them an example, a little more clear example, Alex. I, I know you've got a, a transaction you're going to be closing pretty soon, and and just uh, give them like an overview of of how much money is to make. Well, it, it's actually against my religion, Alonso, to, 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 to discuss to discuss my personal finances. But let me give you an example. Uh, just let's say, say, let's say, say let's say let's say that an agent lists a property uh and it's uh, 400,000 okay? okay and uh the agent that particular listing agent happens to also find the buyer okay uh typically uh the, on, on a standard sale the the seller will allow a 6% commission so now the commissions are on on 400,000 at 6% when we take out my calculator it's what, what 24, is it 24,000 mm-hmm. okay so those are the commissions that are that are to be paid out at the close of escrow. Okay, now because that listing agent is is what we call double ending it, or or they're they're acting as dual agency for the buyer and the seller, that that that's going to be their commissions. Now the broker, uh, in most cases, is taking twenty percent of that. So at twenty four thousand, uh, twenty percent of twenty four thousand. Where does that work out about to? Four, four thousand. About forty eight hundred bucks. Forty eight hundred. Okay. Bucks. So the broker's taking forty eight hundred dollars of that. So now we're down to the age is now down to about nineteen thousand. Okay. Um, after that, you know, it's one hundred fifty bucks. Transaction coordinator we made another two fifty. So when when we talk about percentages now, it's difficult to to split hairs that way in percentages. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, maybe eighteen and a half on on that one single transaction. But that one single transaction takes you know sometimes three months to close. Um, that particular, you know, some of those are short sales. So you, 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 
you know, in, in that particular case, you have to pay a, a, a negotiator. It's another $600. Um, sometimes on a short sale now, the bank is going to take another 1% because they, if they see you're double ending it, they don't want to give you the full 6%. So now they're only giving you 5 so now, now you know you you can continue to, to to chisel away at the commissions. It ends up being fifteen grand at the end of the day. So that twenty four thousand goes down to fifteen grand pretty quickly. And and uh, and uh, those are the things I think that that most people don't don't realize or understand, especially if you're trying to get into the business. But but the 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 issue uh, that we were talking about mainly uh, to get started in the industry is education. And I think that that's where most people fall short because. Uh, the state actually makes it fairly easy to um, to get your your license, and um, and, and now <clears throat> it, not only that, now it's it's a little bit tougher for a new agent to get started because now not only do you just have to uh, pay your fees on getting licensed, but also now is that you need to belong to a, a board of realtors, you know. So now it's not like before where you would get licensed and you can sell real estate and not belong to a board of realtors. Now it, it makes it, the state makes it mandatory where you have to belong to a, a board of realtors and with belonging to a board of realtors that you got fees you got to pay as yeah, a reminder it's, we're, we're, we're coming up on one that's well, it's, due, it's, right? it's 800 dollars a year it's 800 bucks so 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 and it's because there's a lot of agents out there that go and they borrow uh, other agents super keys and and then and then uh, it allows them to get away without paying the fees and the dues and really not be a legitimate agent they may be licensed, but they they, they they don't carry the all the credentials, if you will. Yeah, so, so now as of this year they made a new regulation that not not only do you need to be licensed, but you need to belong for a board in order for a broker to uh have you selling under them. So unless the broker wants to pay the the the, the fine of having you as a as a, a member on their on their uh, as a licensed agent and a lot of us don't want to take that risk, you know, we'd rather just, you know, let you go and not hang your license with us until you become a board member. Yeah, and, and now with technology, I mentioned the super key. Now with technology, um, now I can't even let somebody borrow my super key because now it's on my phone. Oh, wow. Yeah, it connects to my to the Bluetooth, and, and all of the boards recently changed the requirement for the for the actual lockbox. So now it has that technology to get on there. So so these are all things to think about now com- coming in as, ag- as an agent. Uh, I would say that most agents maybe close one transaction in the first year. And that's because you're just getting started in, in the market. You're just barely learning how to, how uh, the processes of number of number one dealing with clients and then and then getting them under contract. And then the other thing is is that actually getting it closed. You know, the 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 art of being a good agent is to be able to close the transaction. Because getting it getting to talk to people and getting it to the point of being able to consult with them, and then now writing contracts and getting all that done, it, there there is definitely a certain amount of wisdom that one needs to get to that point. And and that's absolutely true uh, because you got to keep your client motivated. You know, by the time they're mid mid midway of the transaction, they think nothing's getting done. So you got to keep them motivated and kind of. Uh, constantly be giving them updates you know hold on hang on to your seat this is gonna happen you know it's out of our control you know we're waiting back for the appraisal to come back in and and you know you got to be kind of uh have a good communication open line of communication with your client because or else they're just gonna say oh my agent doesn't do shit for me you know <laughs> excuse my language and, and that's a lot of that's the the that's what a lot of the uh, clients when they're in a transaction i mean and i understand i yeah, completely they'll, they'll, understand they'll tell you to your face yeah and i completely <laughs> understand their frustration they want to get into their new new property you know they want to know if it's going to happen or not and they're anxious but sometimes it's just uh they got to give the agent a little bit of of how do you say a uh, uh, breathing air you know space to do what they got to do you know I, I always tell them that the, the best thing to have at the, at that point is patience because it's really out of our control it falls on the lender but I, I did want to comment real quick because because Phil um, is trying to come into the industry and of of a false expectation that I that I noticed with most people that are coming in I used to work with a company uh, right here in Uptown Whittier they used to put a sign up in front of the in front of the building said now hiring so I would get all these people that come in and and they would they would question me as to oh like what's the job entail well it's it's a commission based job you know it's it's not 
it's not salary based. We're not paying a, a, a somebody regular paycheck. You got to come in and actually work. And they they seemed a little surprised. They seemed like, oh, really? I, you mean I have to work to get to make money? It's like, <laughs> well, absolutely. So so one of the things that that we always talk about is that you you want to um, if you're gonna come into real estate, you have to treat it as as a profession. You have to treat it as as a real job. At, at not, that point, not a hobby. At, at that point, you become an entrepreneur and and. Uh, it's basically your own business, so you're gonna be as successful as you want to be. You know, you're gonna do whatever it takes to sell. You know that because your your objective is to sell homes, and and, and uh, like I said, that's just one example of the commission you can earn. Like Alex said, one a year. But imagine there's agents that come in and they're doing three or four a month, and it's not. Uh, I I I don't I don't want to say I'm blowing smoke up your. You know what? But it's it, it's it's actually true. You know, there are agents that are doing that. You know, I've got one successful agent that that that's proven that to me. And I don't know how she does it, but she's a great agent and, and she's constantly closing two, three deals a month. Well, well one of the you ways know? one of the ways that I know that she is doing it is that she's not treating her job like a hobby. A, a lot of the agents, you know, Jim, they come in, they stroll in about 10 o'clock. They, they make a few phone calls, maybe maybe uh uh, they, they, they might write a few emails. They'll go to lunch. You won't see them for maybe two hours. They'll come back, make a few more phone calls, and they're out of there by 3 o'clock. That, to me, is not a full day, right? And they, sometimes they used to criticize me because I'd still be there at 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And they said, what are you still doing there? It's like, dude, I got work to do. I got, I got stuff I got going on. I, I, can't, I cannot wait for the business just to fall on my lap because it's not going to happen. And, and that's, the, that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions now coming into real estate that um, – that most people have coming into the business. And that's why I, why I think also why you have such a big turnaround. You have the people that come in, they get their licenses, and they realize that it's real work, and then they get right back out because they want that steady paycheck. So then I got a question. Two of the things that, uh, again, call it misnomers or, I mean, uh, Alonzo touched on it. How much hand-holding do you actually have to do with the customer? I thought once... You know, you find somebody who buys a house, sign here. I won't see you for 30 days until actually, actually, they're, they're going to be calling your phone every <laughs> little while. And, and now, and, now uh, because of the luxury of Facebook and texting and everything yeah. else, they're going to they're gonna find every other medium to get a hold of you. you yeah. know? So, so <laughs> and, and like I said, it's, 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 it's basically you become a, how can I say it? A, a, how can I say that I lost a, a well, train it, of thought? You well, become like well, this well, kind it, of uh, you, you start. I think most comforter. agents. Well, I think this is why most agents get a bad rap is because they fi- they start finding or start losing reasons why they're they're trying to find excuses as to why things aren't happening the, the way that they're supposed to be happening. And and, and, and that's then, one of the things that some agents stop answering phone calls. Where where now not only do you get a a pissed off client because now. You know, you're, they're not getting the comfort they need, you know. And, you and run that's, out of answers. Well, that, that sometimes, and, and that is really true. Sometimes you do run out of answers. Sometimes we don't know why the banks are taking so long, you know. We don't know why the appraisal hasn't gone out there and done this, this stuff. But a good agent is also a good excuse maker. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> excuse me that oh, I got to say this. But Did you just say that right uh, now? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, that's absolutely true, Alex. And sometimes... I mean, I, I would, I would I'm not going to gonna sugarcoat it. Sometimes we, you we know, have 10 we need seconds. I, I beg to differ you there, and I'll, I will tell you why. A good agent will explain these things to their client. Okay, that's a better, a better, uh, a better way of phrasing it. Explain it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be right back with some more real estate rant. Looking for a delicious, fresh family meal that's ready when you are and easy on your budget? Welcome to Piara Pizza. We make our pizzas with handmade dough, 100% real cheese, and tomato sauce blended with our own spices. Nothing is ever frozen. We always have large pepperoni and cheese pizzas fresh and waiting for you for only $5. Or choose one of our specialty pizzas. We have veggie, meat lovers, supreme, and Hawaiian. Add an order of our amazing hot wings, cheesy bread, or breadsticks. Our locations are ultra modern, ultra clean, and open seven days a week. Visit any one of our locations today. Or check us out on the web at www.piarapizza.com. Piara Pizza. Fresh, hot, and ready for you when you come in. Stop in for your Piara Pizza today.
Protec Carpet Tile and Care provides professional cleaning services for carpet, tile, grout, upholstery, and fine area rugs. Protec technicians are professionally trained and certified cleaning and restoration experts. We specialize in restoring damage caused by heavy soil and odor. We can remove challenging spots such as coffee, tea, ink, gum, wine, and many more. We have saved our customers thousands of dollars on new flooring and furniture expenses with our advanced cleaning processes. Call for a free estimate at 562-447-4300 and visit us on our website, www.myprotechsite.com. Hey, this is Joe Perez, owner at Protech. Just reminding you that Protech Carpet and Tile Care is your professional choice. What's wrong? I can't stop craving a cigarette. I just quit. Hey, what are you smoking on? Oh, this? Best e-juice on the planet. First the flavor, of course. What's that? Only the best alternative to smoking with a great flavor. It has a burst of flavor in every puff. Well, does it have nicotine? It comes in different levels, including zero. They have 20 flavors and more coming. All the products are made in the U.S. Check them out at www.burstoflavor.com. Dot com or call them at 855 we burst hey let's burst together it's not just flavor it's an experience cigarettes you've met your match <laughs> number one <laughs> bah, bah, bah. number one bah, is that a starter or as high as you can count i was ordering number one tequila everybody's asking for number one great another fancy bottle these guys are true honest never compromise integrity they make tequila come on fashion. never mass produce so what are you saying I'm saying have the number one. Anything less is number two. Number one! <laughs> number one, tequila. Everyone, even Elvis loves firehouse chefs. Catch FHC Radio every Wednesday from 8 to 9 p.m. on the Rant Radio Network. Live from the Rant Radio Network, you're listening to... Re- State Rant with your host, Alex Alanis, and your co-host, Mr. Alonso Rodriguez. No problems, just solutions for real estate needs, hot topics, and controversial chat. And we are back here at the Real Estate Rant, the towers of the Rant Radio Network. Uh, Alex and Alonso here in studio. Another uh, segment of what to expect when you're becoming a new real estate agent. So let, yeah. let, let me ask that. Okay, so from the outsider's perspective, um, again, visions of grandeur. I've heard stories, you know, these guys work 15 hours a week. They're closing a deal a week. Uh, you can make a hundred grand a year doing virtually nothing. It's it comes back to the point of people you know. If you find your niche, feel let me let me tell you one thing. Once you find your niche, you're golden because now you've got a steady flow of leads coming in, and you found your niche. You know you know what people are going going. Uh, which what what's gonna attract clientele to you? So that's the most hardest uh, thing I want to say that becoming an agent is finding your niche. Your target audience, and like I said, once you find that, you got a bunch of people that are gonna be coming coming to you. I mean, I've seen a lot of mom and pop shops who started, you know, out there uh, advertising. Uh, uh, how can I say, uh, modifications? And guess what? The modifications, ninety eight percent of them weren't able to do them. So what? It, what was next for them? They listed their property for sale. You know, they became very, very, very successful doing a lot of short sales. Why? Because they found their niche. And that's what it takes to be a good real estate agent. You know, once you got your niche and you got your, your steady clientele, then you're golden. You know, you are going to be one of those agents with the luxury of sitting back and, you know, you're going to have enough money to pay a staff that if you wanted to go in to the office, you go in. And, and if not, you know, it's still getting done. Well, let, 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 take, let's bring some depression into the, into, say, into yeah, the so mix. How, how long does it take to get to that level? It's it's there, there's not really a time frame. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not how a much, level. It's, you, it's, you could walk into the business and all, all of a sudden I'm, just all of a sudden get the business because of who you know or or who you're working with or or I mean maybe or you what know office you join. Maybe you know an asset manager. You know that's really good. You know maybe a uh, maybe a someone you know is. Uh, is an asset manager for a big bank, and guess what? Now you're in the business, so guess who they're going to rather give their business to? Yeah, you know, and, and, and it really doesn't matter how much you know because, quite frankly, depending on what office you go to, most of the offices have a support team. So even if you don't know how to do real estate, if you just got your license and, you, you yeah, okay, you learned a bunch of terms and you were able to pass the test, but you know really little about the contracts because they don't teach you that stuff in class. 
Those things you learn with your brokerage. And a lot of brokerages, when you go to their office meetings, they're not talking to you about how to write contracts and that kind of stuff. They're talking about how to get bring uh, the client in, you know, we'll worry bring the about in, you know, exactly. we'll worry about how how to how who's gonna help you fill out the paperwork, you know. Even if it means giving up a small percentage of, of fee to help them write up your offers or help you, you know, understand the actual process of how it works. You know, but the important thing of it is is bring the client in. Bring the client in and we're gonna wing it, you know. We're gonna wing it. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna wing it. <laughs> well, we're gonna wing it in a sense with the with the uh support group that's gonna help us get the transaction closed. I don't wanna say we're just going into something we don't know, because that's absolutely what we don't wanna do. We, you know, we wanna uh, get involved with groups that know what they're doing, you know. And if we don't have the answer, you know, find a solution, you know. That's you know, that's one one important aspect of the real estate business. And and like I said, it's all a network. You know, you have your support group. You go to people. You find the answers, and you get the problems done. You know, you get the results. So so in essence, what Alonso's talking about is that most real estate agents are chasers. They're chasing this stuff, and and that to me is sad. I really do believe that the industry has has dumbed down because of that. They've done themselves down because I've always taken the position of educating first. And, and then, because, you know, I would hate to walk into, attorney, an, into an attorney's office and, and be sitting there just because they were able to get me there. Not, well, not, not the, because they can do the job. The, the, that, you got a good point there, Alex, but we all want, as a as, as new agent, and I'm starting off, I don't want to, I'm not going to spend all the time educating me and let business go. So I'm going to run with it, you know. I'm going to run with with. with how it how it comes to me well i'm you know, saying i'm and, saying that's why the industry's got a bad and name. and that's the thing about it you know that's the thing about it where like like well phil was talking early there is people that you know fall into it and they become successful right away you know because why because they know the person well they I, have I, I they have that, the people skills i think that environment exists in all businesses what, what i'm saying is is that if i'm a consumer and i'm i'm looking for a good agent i, I think i would like an agent that knows what they're doing not just got me there because they were able to. They were able to buy me dinner. They were able to talk me into into coming into their office or have a meeting with them. And then and then and then we'll worry about the particulars uh, later. I, I, I'll I, tell I, you. I, what, I don't know. I'm feeling comfortable with that. I'll tell you I what. Mean, what do you think, I'll Flood? tell you what helped me and and made me very successful. The the first year I was selling real estate, I had no idea. I knew how to pass tests, but I didn't know how to write up contracts. I didn't know what I was getting into. My best <laughs> my best answer, you know, my best answer to my client was, "Let me get back to you. Let me verify with my broker, and I'll get back to you." And usually people are very nice and they say, "Oh, okay, that sounds good." And then we go back and we ask our broker or you know a staff in there and and we'll find the answer and that's what it takes to be a good real estate agent in my part i want to say so then i'll be a spectacular agent because i'm like alonzo uh, the whole fake it till you make it yeah no problem sign here sign here sign here and then i'll go back and verify before i file anything so and, yeah and, no and, problem and that's exactly what 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 uh as as a starting agent that's exactly what a lot you? of people do you know that's that's what it takes it takes uh, i used to re i used to remember a good friend of mine that had a had a a, a a whole concept of guerrilla marketing was what he called it. And his, his idea was, is, was get it done, you know. He'd go out and he'll post signs everywhere and we buy houses and blah, blah, blah. And he'll do it, you know. And he would, he would lecture me a lot on guerrilla marketing. And it was, Alonzo, by the time they catch up to us or they give us our fine, we've made the millions, you know. It's okay. I'll pay $300, $400 for a little fine. But why? Because I already took the initiative and I did it, you know. I've already got all the, all the phones ringing. And it, it's exactly what he used to do, you know. We would go down Whittier Boulevard, Phil, all the way to South Central, downtown L.A., just nailing poles, you know. We buy houses, we buy houses, all down Whittier Boulevard, come back down Beverly, and those those signs were everywhere. So could you imagine the, the free advertising that, it, that we've got, the publicity? Oh, yeah. The phones that rang? Why? Because we actually went out and did it, you know. It wasn't, I mean, if you're if you're one of those people that sit back and think about the idea and don't, actually put the actions to work, then you're probably not going to be a good agent. You know, it, it, this in this market now, it takes uh, it takes commitment and it takes action. Well, it's kind of what we were talking about earlier, is that you can't treat it like a hobby. You have to actually step in and you need to get yourself known but, and you need to expose yourself but those one, ways. But one of the things that I, I, I try to uh, tell new agents is don't be scared to do it. You know, a lot of agents, and, and I myself, for a fact, know that I was one of those agents scared to do it. Why? Because... I was not licensed or I didn't know what 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 to expect and I was kind of scared. And now I try to I try to take that fear out of them is do it, you know. 
Don't sit back and think about it. Do it. If you don't know the answer, find the answer. We'll find the answer. You got a support team. It's, I wish someone would have told me, uh, don't worry about it. I'm going to help you. You know, I'm going to just bring the client, you know, because there's times I would let clients go because I didn't feel confident enough that I was going to have the support group to help me get that transaction closed. And it's not like that, you know, Phil, uh, honestly, truth is like we all we're all making money out of the out of the sale. So we're all going to help and we're going to put our 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 grain of salt to get that transaction closed. I mean, you're not I don't care what office you go to unless it's a really uh, office where they're really not giving you any support. But every office is going to give you that support. Why? Because there's an interest in there for everybody. And I, I'm talking from title reps, from escrow officers, from everybody makes money off a transaction. So you're not alone in it. And my my biggest advice I can give you is is don't be scared and just go out there and do it. Like the Nike commercial, just do it, you know? Yes, of course. Uh, you know, there, there's something that somebody told me early on when I became an agent to to expect something. And and the reason why they were telling me this is because right now what you're talking about is the rah-rah of the industry. And I, I'm, not, I'm not against the rah-rah. I just don't necessarily like it myself. But but I think the rah rah is, is a necessary uh, uh, component in, in any business. It doesn't matter what business you're in, okay? But this this broker told me this. It was it wasn't Alonso. It was it was another broker. He said, if you're going to become a real estate agent, expect to be sued. He said you will get sued. And oh, it was uh, Mike. Mike Mike actually was, uh, is the one that told me that. It was actually his broker. But but. Uh, but this is the reason why I, I give the push towards the educational end of it. I, I try not to focus too much on the rah-rah of the industry because that's where most brokers will focus. I try to focus more on 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 being being a little more diligent on, on what it is that you're writing and how you're writing it and actually consulting you with your clients and reading the documents. It, it's, it's amazing when I submit an offer to a listing agent how how they don't read it, and a lot of times I'm getting the I'm getting the better of of the situation where instead of getting two and a half percent, I might get three percent, and they're pissed off to no end because they didn't read the contract. Now, so so I'm not saying I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the rah rah because I I I would have to agree that you have to get out there, you have to expose yourself, and by any means necessary. We talked about that, okay? But but definitely. Consider the fact that well, well you got on, me on doing the other, a show, Alex. On the other end. <laughs> you got me doing a show, Alex. <laughs> well, okay, and, and 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 granted, that's why we do the show. But definitely, uh, uh, put enough focus on the educational end of it. And, and like I said, that's very important. But like I said, a, a smart broker will have someone in house that can help them with that. Thanks, Alex. By the way, <laughs> well, see, that's what I was going to ask though. That if you hit the ground running. You know, most industries, most um, MLMs, most everything, it's always about just go out there, sell it, 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 sell it and, you know, figure it out in the back end. Doesn't matter what you do. Right. Well, well uh, the, 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 doesn't the, matter what you do. The beauty about this field is that it's not rocket science, you know. It's not rocket science, and it's very self-explanatory. If you have a good uh, form of communicating to a client, then you'll be successful, I believe, in this business because that's what it takes. Everything, it's... Just interpreting the contracts, interpreting the contracts, and 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 Aggres putting the aggressive pu negotiation, putting the putting the client at ease. Let them know the steps, what's what's involved next. You know, putting them at ease. And if you don't know, like I said, you go to your broker or, or you go to your lender. Well, what's gonna happen? What am I? What what can I tell my client? You know, they're gonna give you the answers. But if you if you're if you don't go find out what you need to tell your client, then your client's gonna be upset and say, "Ah, oh, my agent's a piece of." <laughs> so, so Phil, uh, uh, listening to us now, we, we got about thirty seconds. Listening to us, uh, what what would you say about coming into the business? Are you still interested? L before you say that, let me let me let me make one last remark. Like, like they told me when uh, when I got into the business, is it's a hell of a part time job. Don't leave your first job, but try it out. <laughs> oh yeah. Try it out. <laughs> Well, Phil, thanks for joining us. Uh, hey, thanks uh, for having me. All right. Uh, we're coming up on well, the end of the show here. Did we Merry, get Merry Christmas. <laughs> uh, so what was your thought on that, Phil? What do you think? I'm going to need some time to reconsider oh, that one. Oh, 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 I, well, I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Pantalones, can we, uh, can we let Phil give us a final thought? Please. You know what? Um, it, it's gonna give me, I'm going to need some more time. It's, it's going to give me something to think about. I really didn't know it was going to be that challenging. I had a different vision of how easy it would be to get in there. 
Well, I hope we clarified a little bit of the of the insight of what really goes on in you real did. estate. It's a, the, that information is going to be helpful. I appreciate it. Thank you both. Well, thank you for Thanks joining for us here. Show. Have a good Christmas. Thanks for joining us Likewise. here on the Real Estate Rant. Now here we at the can go Radio out and Network. open our presents. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I opened mine last night. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in to Real Estate Rant Radio. Make sure to join us every Wednesday at 10 a.m. on the Rant Radio Network where we talk about solutions to your real estate problems. The views and opinions expressed by the host or any guest on this show are encouraged to be followed up by a professional tax advisor or attorney as we are not qualified or authorized to give advice in two areas, legal matters and tax matters.